You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt and I'm Keith. And today we'll be recapping uh, Raw from 918, which yeah. is September 18th. That's what that's what the date is. Yeah. This was one of those episodes in the middle of like a season of TV a TV show you're watching, and they just throw a clip show together, and that's basically it. Well, you know what the real thing is? Mm. It's been a month since SummerSlam, and they kind of just we got everything yeah, out of every- the way already. They started yeah. too early. That's really what it was. They started everything too early, and at this point, they're like, okay, um, we hit all the notes we wanted to hit, so uh, I guess we'll just make this like a recap show. Here's some poo poo for you. Hope yeah. you like it. Yeah, well, <sighs> it wasn't it wasn't terrible. No, it wasn't bad, but it just wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of love put into the story. Yeah, it was kind of hard to. A lot of stuff seemed phoned in, right? Yeah. Okay. It was hard. It was. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's very disconnected episode. Yeah, yeah. Like, I wasn't even paying attention to half the segments because it was the same nonsense. Like, I didn't even watch the Brock and... Oh, yeah, you didn't need yeah. to. There was there really Strong nothing thing. to it. Um, but, yeah, like, Roman was by himself. There was no Cena. I thought that was a good promo, though. Oh, no, he did fine. Yes. I'm just saying that mm-hmm. usually you build to something. Right. But at the same time, he made a good point. Uh, we'll oh, get absolutely. to that later. Yeah. No, that's very true. Um, all right. So before the show even started, they showed because uh, uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan, Heenan had uh, passed away. What uh, Sun- Sunday? Sunday? Yeah, I think I, think it I heard Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Um, so they did um, uh, like a tribute mm-hmm. thing to him throughout yeah. the course of the episode. They played like uh, a bunch of clips, like when or one of the segments was. A bunch of clips with him and Gorilla Monsoon doing random things on yeah. Monday Night Raw, yeah. and um, the other things throughout the course of the show. No, mm-hmm. um, you know, Corey Graves made it seem. You know, he was just like, uh, without Bobby the Brain, I wouldn't be here today, or things like that. So it said something of... about him, like that's the reason why he was yeah, a fan of wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, it said here, but I think he was battling some sort of cancer. Yeah, he, apparently he had been, like, unable to, like, take care of himself for mm-hmm. at least a few months. Yeah. So. Yeah. Very sad. Yeah. But uh, So, so yeah. we opened the show with uh, Kurt Angle coming out to yes. announce more illegitimate children. Yes, of course. No, that didn't happen. <laughs> um, so he was basically hyping up No Mercy, saying, we've got WrestleMania caliber matches, because we didn't know that by now. No, well, because Corey Graves keeps on saying it. Everybody's saying it. Michael Cole talk. does, too. <sighs> Michael Cole. Um, so, yeah, anyway, he's going on about that. And then The Miz interrupts. And is complaining why the IC title isn't being defended on another pay per view. That would be two in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Kurt was like, "Well, if you would let me finish, I was going to get to that tonight. There'll be a fatal four way with the Hardy Boys, Elias, and Jason Jordan, and so for the, number one contendership yes, no. of the IC title. Uh huh. And the Miz was saying that Jason Jordan isn't worthy just because he's your son. Mm-hmm. You're a terrible father and all types of other stuff. Yeah, it's really <laughs> funny because, like, if you watch the Kurt Angle 24, you could see, like, how, how like... Oh, how much how, he loves his kid. Yeah. yeah, and how important it is to spend time with them mm-hmm. now because, like, he didn't have the opportunity when it's he was... so bad. And, and, like, the Miz, like, out of... Just off of a fake storyline is making it seem like he's... It's just too funny. Yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah. So The Miz says that Jason Jordan isn't worthy, but Curtis, Axel, and Bo Dallas are, apparently. Yeah, it's hard to get those names out, especially since they main evented Raw. (laughs) You also don't (laughs) say them very often because they're usually just lumped together Mm -hmm. as either the The Social social Outcast, The Miz Tourage, um... I'm sure they had another yeah. name together. But. So, you know, then The Miz was talking bad about Kurt Angle. And then the third Steiner brother, a.k.a. Jason Jordan, comes out. That's different. Yeah. Well, well this not... looks like his the Steiner's from, like, the early 90s. Oh, no, was... I'm not saying yeah. you're wrong. I just didn't. <laughs> I, I, I didn't hear that. I haven't heard that parallel. I don't know. What um, are you going to do? It's true. Um, yeah, so then 
Jason Jordan says, don't talk about Kurt that way. <laughs> Instead of, don't talk about my dad. Uh-huh. Yeah. I- I'll tell you what, though. He it's, he seemed comfortable doing it. Yeah. So it's it's I guess he's getting there a little bit. It's it's it's, it's, it's a, one of those things that's just going to have to happen naturally. Yeah. Regardless of how much they push him and push him down mm-hmm. our throats. Yeah. So it'll get there eventually. Yeah. So he he seemed like he was doing all right. Mm-hmm. Like he looked a little nervous, but yeah. that's probably because it was one of the first one of the first times you really had to talk. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And then they got into what just a, a scuffle. Oh uh, well, no. Jason Jordan actually attacked them. Oh, that's right. Right. Yeah. And then the numbers game caught up to them, and he get. Oh no, no. Actually, no. He just attacks and he, them, and then yeah. they run away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, yeah. And then uh, they cut to. They 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 like cut to the back. They show, um, Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax walking. Mm-hmm. I guess backstage, and Alexa Bliss looks very very concerned. Was this appa- before we got curtain. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, so apparently, uh, Alexa's a little bit nervous about her match against Nia Jax, which is coming up next. Um, but they cut back to commercial, and when they do that, they have a backstage segment with Kurt Angle telling Jason Jordan to relax. Mm-hmm. You can't get can't can't get all fired up like this. I don't understand why all these people are talking bad about me since I'm just your son and I'm getting all the special privileges. Yeah, and he <laughs> says he he doesn't like the looks and the state or and the whispers mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And Angle explains to him the only way to get them to stop is by proving that you belong. Yep, by winning the six pack challenge and facing the Miz at no mercy. Yes. Yeah. And uh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um after that, yeah, we had the uh, Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax match. Yes. So, I guess the beginning of the match, Nia was kind of chasing Alexa around, right? Yes. Alexa was running yeah. away pretty. And much then at the one point, time. she ran outside of the ring as she was like, "All right, screw this, I'm done." Yeah. Starts so walking up this the ramp. Then Sasha comes out, and Alexa turns and runs toward the ring. Right, runs into Nia. Yep. Is laying on the ground. We cut to mer- commercial. We come back and Alexa Bliss is on the offensive. You sure about that? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I know at some point she like tricked. They might have showed what happened yeah. during the commercial. I was going to say, I'm almost positive she like ran out of the way and Nia jumped into the turnbuckle because mm-hmm. it's a very popular um, move for the women to like change momentum. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of Alexa running away. Which throughout the match what was expected yeah because that was kind of the story um and then uh Nia Jax just basically uses her power to, oh yeah, yeah oh okay yeah that's right because Alexa she goes for uh some move off the top rope she jumps down or jumps off the top rope at Nia, Nia catches, and catches her, her right. hits her with the Samoan drop and then pins her yep. um and at that and, point there's no other real way you can no, finish no. this match. There's no. no way Alexa was going to go over. Yeah, it's a no, non-title match, and mm-hmm. it's leading to the story at No Mercy. Yep. Um, so what happened after that is that while Nia Jax is celebrating, uh, Sasha Banks jumps into the ring and starts attacking her, but she's like immediately swatted off by Nia. Oh, yeah. Um, Nia goes in to, for the kill, more or less, on Sasha and Alexa, and then Bailey's music hits. Yep, and she actually got a good reaction. Yeah, she I mean, was in her hometown. Home. Yeah, I know. so I don't know. That doesn't really matter. She probably would have, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Well, maybe. it's because she's come back. I think that yeah, has a lot to do with I it. I know, but um, I, I'm sure there were people that totally forgot she even existed. I guess so. Nah. I don't know. Um, so she comes out. The three of them team up and take out Nia Jax. Yep. And then after that. <laughs> This is pretty funny. Yeah, Alexa is in, interested in trying to celebrate their conquering of Naya with uh, Sasha and Bailey, and uh, she gets a, a Bailey to belly. For, yeah, she goes up her. in between them and puts her, raises everybody's hand. Yeah, and then I think Sasha kicks her. Yeah, and she, then, yeah hits her like with a knee, I think, and then she gets a Bailey to belly. Yeah, and then uh, that was it. Yep, that was was that it for the women? I think. Uh. I think they got one segment, right? I think that was it. Yeah. All right. So uh, up next, we have uh, a Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman video package. Yeah. Um, I guess leading to the interview that uh, Cole had mm-hmm. later on in the yes. night between the two of them. The taped interview. 
Yeah. Yeah. Which is funny because that yeah. that part's taped, but he's asking the questions right. to the to the Titan Tron. Yeah. yeah. So it's WWE silly. Mm-hmm. So up next we had Sheamus and Cesaro come out. Now I thought this was advertised as just Sheamus and Cesaro versus the club, right? It was. Okay. So they come out and you know they were talking about how everybody only likes you know the Hardys and Dean and Seth because they're nostalgia acts and what nostalgia acts nostalgia acts oh okay yeah. I'm like what the hell does nostalgia acts <laughs> mean no okay <clears throat> but you know they're only using each other for own selfish needs uh, referring to Dean and Seth yes. the Hardys, yeah, the Hardys I guess are, they were just because they're you know an old gimmick brought up again. Yes. Or an old team, I should say. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but yeah, basically that, you know, while they're a team now and everything is going their way, basically what they reiterated from what they said last week, mm-hmm. that when things aren't going their way, they're just going to be fighting again. Yes, because they don't trust each other. Mm-hmm. And then they then uh, Seamus and Cesar go on about how uh, they're, they're, a, they're, they're a good team. Mm-hmm. And that uh, they know exactly, or they'll never like, <clears throat> they'll never go against each other, and right. that I've never seen that before. Yeah, the best of seven. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's different though, because that's kind of what caused it. Yeah. And then they went. Um, Remember how sick of that we were? It was dumb, but we kind of figured it was going to lead to this, and it certainly did work yeah. out. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then they re- reiterated that they are not just above the bar; they mm-hmm. are the bar. Like it sounds so say. funny when they say that. Yeah. Um, and then at this point, Dean and Seth come out, mm. and they go on about how they're brothers, and they they stand by each other no matter what. Mm-hmm. Then they make fun of Seamus and Cesaro and their kilts. Yes, which is, yeah, it's fair. You know, it's a weird, um, weird getup, because it's kind of like, it looks like army gear a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, and... Cesaro's jacket is way too big for him. Wow. <laughs> it's you know. just weird. It's They're like they took two of Seamus' jackets gonna say, and said, here you go. Yeah. Identical um, sizes. Yeah. And then Gallows and Anderson come out because obviously the uh, word brothers was mentioned. So yes. they had to come out. And so just... their brother senses were tangling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they said uh, Seamus and Cesaro weren't good brothers because they ran out, out on them last week. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they said that Dean and Seth weren't good brothers because they took advantage of... Uh, the gallows and anderson being left alone yep um and then <laughs> this this is the best part of the segment gallows calls them nerds no and... he calls dean and seth nerds oh, okay. yeah, to yeah. be specific okay fair enough um, um and then seth grabs the mic and goes oh you shouldn't have said that you really shouldn't have said that and this is point where they're going what the hell's he talking about yep and then dean starts he, he loses it there's like shaking fighting, yeah. and stuff he's like nobody calls me a nerd and then he attacks gallows <laughs> i wish we got some backstory on that uh i don't think we really need it I it kind of just kind of fits the character like gets upset overly upset about something silly mm, that's so true. um so they start fighting and then it cuts the commercial as it usually does uh cuts back from commercial and now that regular tag team match has turned into a triple threat mm-hmm. tag team match so had this been a better show, or a more packed show, I should say, uh-huh. this match could have ended earlier on. Oh, you mean Long because time. it was long? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, it was very yeah, long. Yeah, because at one point, uh, Cesaro was beating Dean up outside the ring, slamming him into the barricade, mm-hmm. um, and Seth yeah. was inside the ring, and Gallows and Anderson were able to hit the magic killer on him. They yes. could have just finished the match there. Yeah, that could have. I honestly thought I, that's I thought, where they were going to yeah, end I it. I thought so, too, because so. then you give them a win, you make them look legitimate, mm-hmm. and then after, because what are you going to do after this? Like, is this going to keep going? I think Dean and Seth are going to face um, Seamus and Cesaro for at least one more pay per view. Think? Um, well, at what's this... the next pay? Is TLC? Yes. So, oh, imagine if they had a TLC match with the Hardys, Dean, Dean, Seth, and Seamus and Cesaro. That'd be great. It would. Be that fun. could be the one TLC match, and it'd be fantastic. Yeah. So maybe uh, they will do that. I don't know. Do you really want to? Yes. No, I know. But do you really want to put the Hardys at risk here and getting you, hurt? Who do you put them at risk? Did you not see that Ring of Honor t- um, ladder match that yes, they did? Yes, I did. Yeah. There's no, there's no putting them at risk. They'll be fine. If anything, they're putting the others at risk. <laughs> I guess so. They are 42 and 40, It right? doesn't matter. Yeah. 
Look, I'm just saying, man. Remember what we said about Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar in Hell in a Cell a few years ago? That I thought the Undertaker was going to die in the cell? <laughs> I know. I said but that he, about his previous three but, matches But as he well. didn't die. He didn't. So, and it was actually a decent match, I, I recall. I was, I think, a One candidate of, for match of the year. Was it really? Yes. Yeah. Huh. I know I, both of their matches were candidates for match of the year, which was surprising. But not, not the... Um, not the, not like the Wrestling Observer one, the yeah. WWE oh, yeah, yeah, Slammy yeah. I gotcha. one. But still, it's something. Mm. So, because those are a little biased, but yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, they had done, they hit the Magic Killer, but then Dean. Seth broke up. No, the, Dean broke it up, right? I thought, I thought Dean got hit with the Magic Killer. No, 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 killer. it was Seth that got hit with the Magic Killer. Yeah. You were Dean breaks up the pin, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh yeah that's when yeah yeah seth threw oh yeah springboard he, and cesaro off oh, i don't know just that was always, really cool yeah oh yeah it was he it's like just, went flying ever since Cass landed on the outside of the ring and that was it it's just like well uh, you gotta remember experience oh, body type oh absolutely so i would trust cesaro to do something like that hell of a lot more than someone oh, I like know. uh i know Ga- oh not gallows um Cass? Cass, there you go yeah. there's they're all the same people mm-hmm. um but, yeah, so in the end, it was the way every Gallows and Anderson match always ends. Oh, Anderson, Anderson takes the pin. pin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I guess Dean was doing his through the rope thing, whatever mm-hmm. the hell it's called. Um, By through the rope, you mean his, the, little... his like clothesline? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I guess when he went to do that, Sheamus tagged him, and then yeah. Dean hit got Anderson with the dirty deeds, mm-hmm. and Sheamus threw ambrose out of the ring and then pinned anderson and yes. that was it yep so, so yeah yeah it was, it was kind of like it was it kind of just oh no it was yeah. a really good match there's a lot of there's a couple of uh there was an instance where dean and seth had i think it was i think it was sheamus and cesaro on the outside on opposite ends of the ring oh and they did the suicide yeah dives. they did suicide yeah. dives and then the club got up got up mm-hmm. and then they did it going yeah, the yeah, other that direction cool. so that was that was a fun mm-hmm. spot um but yeah it was it was a good match and like you had mentioned this was a really weak raw in terms of matches and mm-hmm. kind of segments so they needed to put focus on this but you know, these are the guys that you want to have as the backbone. Oh, absolutely. So, and, like, when you think about, like, the the landscape of the way that they have, like... like this just shows how much talent there actually mm-hmm. is. And it, it's funny, because you think they would start doing this more, putting singles wrestlers, making them tag if teams. If they don't have anything to do or yeah. something like that, yeah. Absolutely. Because you have it so that you have, like, such a crowded upper mid... Or, uh, like, a... It was, I guess, an upper mid card on... You did have it on Raw. Yeah. Dean and Seth not being there certainly helps. Oh, yeah. Um, but you just have so many people with not enough time. Mm-hmm. And SmackDown kind of has the same thing. Yeah. So why not put them together as tag teams? there's lower, lower mid-card. Well, that... but they still have a lot of people who oh, aren't yeah, yeah, being yeah. showcased right. on a regular basis. Right. We haven't seen Bobby Roode in three weeks. Yeah, he's been, he worked the dark matches. But we haven't seen him. I know. So Yeah. Um, but, yo, that's what you got to do is start putting them in... An almost non-existent tag Especially division. Especially considering how weak the tag division That's, yeah, is. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it just makes total sense. So to the, the fact that they did this, besides the fact that it's Dean and Seth reuniting, mm-hmm. it's it's good because, you know, you get them time. They're good workers, so they're going to make good matches and have good stories. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, you know... Yeah, that, well, that's exactly what they do with Sheamus and Cesaro, yeah. too. <laughs> so Because you know Sheamus can't get over on his own. It's true. And Although he might have a chance now, yeah. but I also think that fans wouldn't like him splitting up a Cesaro. Yeah, no. So I think this is more of, more of he has the ability. Mm-hmm. It's just to get there, yeah. he might lose the ability. Yeah. Which you know, that's another guy with all the tools. Because mm-hmm. I mean, that's who Triple H wanted to be the guy years ago. It's true. And then, yeah, fans just didn't react. Yeah, it's funny because he had a decent reaction. I think just so much was going on around him. His best reaction re- was probably when he uh, cashed in on Reigns. Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's funny because Thought he's he going to die. He's another victim of wrong place, wrong time. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. pretty much anyone between two thousand eight and two thousand or now, anyone who was has the potential, just never had a chance. Yeah. 
because CM Punk was huge oh, in the late yeah, 2000s I forget about it. Um, and early 2010s. So no one wanted to, no one could touch him mm-hmm. in terms of fan perception. And then you had Daniel Bryan in the early 2010s. Yeah. So with those two, it's just like. And then they were both ripped away and nobody, we were like, I don't care about any of these people. We'll exactly. Give us, give us what we want, damn it. Exactly. So basically just no one stands a chance mm-hmm. or stood a chance. Yes. So, um, up next, we had a backstage segment with the the Miz. I guess talking up, he was actually more or less talking himself up. Oh yeah, and saying that you know he's going to be a better angle, a better, better angle than yeah. a father. Yes, better a father than Kurt Angle. Yeah, he's really hammering home this. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> and uh, at Dallas and Axel were kind of like, oh, aren't you supposed to be talking about us? Yeah, we're the ones in the match. It's true. And he's like, uh, because because they were basically saying that if they won the match, they were going to take their title shot seriously at No Mercy. Mm, they're going to put on the best match that they can. Yes, which we knew neither of them were winning. But well, yeah, but uh, it's certainly not a. Um, I would I would expect that at very least a Miz Axel or Miz Dallas match wouldn't be that some, bad. Yeah. So even if he holds onto the title for a long time, mm-hmm. at some point they could do something like that. You remember when they had that Heath Slater and Miz match, and that was the end of it. Well, that was that was like a one-off. Yeah, thing. I know, but they could have thrown him in this match or something too. I guess, but I think Heath Slater is not really being used. No, he hasn't. Oh wait, no, he fought uh, Dash Wilder on main event this past week. Uh, Last week, Rhino fought Dash Wilder. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Um. Then we got a yeah John Cena and Roman Reigns video package, which was. Basically the same stuff we've seen in the last two weeks. Yeah. Three weeks. So uh, I, I, I knew when they showed, or I had a feeling when they showed that Lesnar Strowman video package Ooh, earlier on, that this is going to be like a, a phone-in show. Yeah. And then after they played this, like you kind of know for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so after that video package, they have a backstage segment where Kurt Angle's in the back and Goldust is facing the... Uh, the I guess the wall, right? And, <laughs> and Angle's around. like, "Gold dust, what do you want?" <laughs> and then he turns around. He's like, "It's not gold dust. It's Dustin Rhodes." Well, he said Dustin Runnels first, right? No, he didn't. He, I said, Rhodes. he said Dustin. Rhodes. He said Rhodes. I called him Runnels because this is his name. Well, no, I thought that's what he said. No, nah, he said and then he, he said changed Rhodes. It to Dustin Rhodes. He said Rhodes. Yeah. So I'm like, you don't go by Rhodes. It's <laughs> not <like> your name. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and then he wanted another shot at Wyatt. Basically. Yeah. Because he wants, uh, he wants to, I guess, prove that he's not just uh, a mask yeah. or something mm-hmm. like that. He's still an old man, though. It's true, man. Yeah. He's old. What is he? Forty-eight. Uh, he might be fifty. Yeah. I know he's, he's older than. I think he's older than Angle. Yeah. It would make sense. Yeah. Um, so, up next. We oh have, man, this, this was, is how you knew this show was yeah, weak well, because of the amount of time that he got. Well, that. So uh, up next, we had Kurt Hawkins out there. And he was announcing that the Superstar Factory is closed. Yes. But he's apparently the history machine now or something like that. Yeah. Because of his 114 match losing streak. That's impressive. And it's going to end tonight. So you think that's on TV? It's got to be, right? No. It has to be. No, it's got to be house shows and stuff, too. Nah. You really think? Yeah. Yeah. Because remember the whole gold dust? Oh, they, no, they never acknowledged that. What well, they they had they said on TV that their record was terrible, <laughs> but they have like a crazy yeah. winning streak on oh, oh. on the house show circuit. Man, I was really hoping that Kurt Angle said, "Oh, Dustin, your win loss record doesn't let you uh, have another match with Bray." Um, so I just I feel like one fourteen is kind of too too low because he never wins. Well, you figure what? You come back right. After the draft? Or uh, the draft? I would say about a year ago now. Yeah, it was. They were hyping videos right after the draft yeah. had started. So I mean, it, well, because let's say for argument's sake, on house shows, he has. What do they wrestle three times a week? They do four shows, three house shows, and one, and a SmackDown and a, a Raw. Uh, even if they do that, let's say for argument's sake, he has one match a week. Mm-hmm. Even if that's too many, yeah. that's fifty-two. Right. So yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. I was just being dumb. Yeah. That's so, really funny, though. 114 <laughs> in a row. But so, it's going to break it tonight. And the person who answered the challenge also hasn't been on Raw in a month, at least. It's been a maybe, while. Maybe a little it, longer. It's super funny yeah. 
because um like Titus is on all the time. Mm-hmm. So yeah. well, a little <laughs> less now since Tazawa. Yeah, not but the- he has been around. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's really funny that Apollo, who's one of or his main mm-hmm. client, is never with him. So, so yeah, but Apollo yeah. won the match pretty, Duh. pretty quickly. Yeah, they gave it some time, uh, which was kind of uh, like you said, proof that yeah, this was a weak show. Yeah. So, all right, so, say a couple months. Enzo has completely worn out his welcome. <laughs> you should have Kurt Hawkins beat him. No. Then send him back. It's never going to happen. <laughs> Kurt Hawkins is never going to win a match. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Who? Yes, he I don't know. Somebody. Uh, maybe that would be the nail in the coffin for Reigns. Oh, okay. That's never going to happen. No, you don't know. No, it's never going to happen. Anyway. <laughs> um, so uh, now his streak is 115 yes. matches in a row. Yeah. Which they did make a graphic for it and everything afterward. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very proud. Well, it, you know what? It's something. It's true. And so, Kurt Hawkins is a funny guy, so. Oh, uh, yeah. He he is quite entertaining. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up later. Hopefully okay. I remember. Um, so, at, at this point, um, they do the interview for Michael Cole interviewing Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman. Yeah. It's that whole, okay, I'm at the announce table. I'm going to ask questions to the Titantron. But it's a, I guess it's a pre-recorded yeah. mm-hmm. um, interview where they answer the questions or they go back and forth. Yeah. It, it, it was, was nothing new. No. It was more of, uh, it was basically just saying, Heyman saying that Braun made it so that Lesnar has to do whatever it takes mm-hmm. to defeat him. And Braun pretty much says that I'm going to destroy him like I've destroyed him the for the last month. The only takeaway from this segment is really when Lesnar started speaking and said, you know what, Braun, thank you for backing me in this corner, and I'm going to you know, yeah. show you what I'm really made of or whatever he said. Yeah. So. And then, you know, Suplex City, bitch. Yeah, that's his thing. Mm-hmm. But whatever. Yep. It, it, it's going to be a good, or it should be a good match. Yeah. But I, it's hard to say where they're going to go with this. Yeah. So, and then but, up, up next, we got an announcement that the women's title match at No Mercy will now be a fatal five way. Yeah. So Bailey never got her rematch, right? Um, because she she got hurt in her match with Nia, but, which I think was the next night on Raw. But she that? never technically had a match, so I don't think that mattered. Oh, oh yeah. She didn't lose the title. Yeah, she I thought she lost it to Alexa. But that was months before. Was it that long ago? Yeah. This was just a new match. Oh, okay. All right. She yeah, had yeah, earned right. the right to challenge okay. Alexa for the title yeah, at SummerSlam. I don't, I don't know. If they they kind of just threw Bailey in here, basically. Well, yeah, but I think it was expected. Mm-hmm. I think I think what ha- what their plan was as soon as Bailey was ready, they were going to throw her into the next mm-hmm. the next title match right. or the next feud. So whenever whenever she was available, mm-hmm. like let's say for argument's sake, she wasn't able to make it here. Whatever the story for TLC, she would just get thrown in there, something yeah, like I guess that. that makes sense. It kind of, it, it just like because she never, like you said, lost her mm-hmm. shot. Yeah. So I think Bailey would do better off on SmackDown. Well, you know, you could say a lot of things about a lot of people moving around. Yeah, but... I know, but I feel like I don't know. The women are kind of out of the spotlight a little on SmackDown, so I don't feel like. Well, this week they weren't, but yeah. I feel like there's, yeah, I got nothing. Uh, they, th- I, I like the Alexa Bliss Nia Jack storyline. It's fine. It just it feels like they don't know what to do with the rest of them. Well, so, so you mean Sasha, Emma? Yeah, there's too many. There's Brooke, too. There's Mickey well, James, yeah, Alicia Fox. There's too many people Summer on the roster. Yeah, Some are right. She was she was at the uh, that the May Young Classic. Right, that was really funny. Yeah. I'm like, I forgot she works for that. <laughs> um but they they have too much talent not enough time yeah so but that goes back to what we had talked about a while back and possibly getting a woman's show yeah but theoretically speaking they'd all be better off on smackdown yeah so it's kind of hard to say one particular mm-hmm. person would be no i know but i mean ever since bailey has come to raw well yeah she's fallen hammered. a little flat yeah. But, hammered into the ground. But I think it's more of the booking than anything. It's not even necessarily her. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. It's been 100% the booking. Yeah, I'm yeah. not faulting her. 
at all. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, so up next, we had a very interesting segment. Mm-hmm. Roman Reigns comes out to run down John Cena. Yeah. Which his reaction wasn't terrible. It didn't seem like. I mean, the boos were there, but it wasn't. You know. Yeah. I guess maybe it's because they didn't have anybody else to play off of. That that certainly helps. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Ro- Roman comes out, basically says that I'm here, Cena's not, mm-hmm. and then he this is plays. What's gonna happen? Yeah, he plays a clip for the John for John Cena doing the same thing to The Rock yeah. right well, before first, before that he he said you know how can I be a knockoff of John Cena? Do I look anything like John Cena? Do I have oh, yeah. a military haircut? Ask mm-hmm. Alex Riley and stuff. like that. That was really that was really mean. Yeah, I can't. What was his name in Glow? I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Ah, I don't remember either. Um, anyway, so poor Alex Riley. He was quite good. It's just he never really like yeah. like like Roman said, he just he he had the look. He just didn't mm-hmm. he wasn't John Cena, That's so. That's it. Um so uh, so yeah, he plays the a, a video from a Raw right before I think it was February 2012, so yeah. right before WrestleMania 28, mm-hmm. I want to say. Yeah, I think it was 28. Uh, before right before his match with The Rock, okay. and John Cena's like, "I'm here." So where's The Rock? Mm-hmm. So he he ran back to Hollywood, and so now the shoe's basically on the other foot. Yeah, except it's a different Samoan. Yeah. It'll be the same result at WrestleMania, but with a different Samoan being yeah. victorious. So Roman says he's gonna win at No Mercy. Yep. So, we shall see. Yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be tough. Yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah, this is a, another one of those like, if you have inside information, it's easier to tell just based off of like who's gonna be around. Mm-hmm. Like, because right. if you, if you have like, let's say John goes away for a while, mm-hmm. probably gonna have him win. If John's gonna be yeah. around for a little bit maybe have him lose and this way reigns can use yeah right so but yeah so up next we had a backstage interview with i think renee young did most of the interviews for both shows this week right? she's pretty much the interviewer yeah. i mean charlie yeah. was there later on yeah but, but i think Dasha she's do 205 right yeah okay that's what it is now uh so yeah she was interviewing the hardys about their match later on in the uh six pack challenge yes and uh she reminds them that it's not a tag team match mm-hmm. and that they they are opponents yep. and they basically been said that they've been fighting each other their whole lives ever since they were young it's true yep so uh they have no problems attacking each other mm-hmm. or trying to take advantage of one another it's if true. they uh if they need to mm-hmm. so and then we got the uh bray wyatt versus dustin runnels dustin Rhodes. yeah dustin whatever no they they called them yeah Ro- they Rhodes. called them Rhodes. yeah yeah so yeah, this was a weird match because Dustin had complete control of yes. it, and then he basically walked into his sister Abigail, and that was the mm-hmm. end of it. He even hit him. Well, he didn't hit him with shattered <clears throat> dreams. Yes, but he did. That doesn't count. I thought you have yeah, to. He kicked him in the leg too. Yeah. So, but he attempted to. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think they made reference to that. He's like, oh, he just kicked him in the thigh or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, why it wins and i didn't pay attention after finn came on the uh titan tron oh he, well what he said was that um he's like when i was younger something about oh yeah he was talking about the story of the demon or something yeah like and he that, was right? intrigued by like mythological things and he came up with the demon character in his mind so what's more dangerous the demon or the person who came up with the mm-hmm. demon which is a fair point yeah it makes sense yeah it's like if you can if you can imagine something so evil, you know, obviously you have the potential. Yeah. Or at least it's a good idea. Yeah, well, again, at least they haven't been focusing too too much on this storyline, you know. It's yeah, just well, been a little bit here and there. Yeah, they haven't been taking up a lot of time. Yeah. So it's at Finn least you have wrestled that. recently, has he since um not since the Monday after uh, SummerSlam, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I think they had a rematch. So, um, all right. So uh, up next we have uh, Enzo Amore coming out. Yeah, I guess he was just coming out to basically cut a promo and say that he was going to beat uh, Neville. Yes. At No Mercy, and then all of a sudden <laughs> Braun Strowman comes out and levels him. Yes, he and obliterates he, him. Yeah, and he brings him in the ring and then beats the crap out of him some more. And mm-hmm. Hits him with the running power. Oh slam. my god, he gets so so much height on that choke slam. 
so I mean, I, I don't know. It's just their booking with Enzo is so odd. It is odd for sure. But it's just like, all right, you can hang with the cruiserweights, but everybody else is just gonna beat the crap out of you. Actually, the cruiserweights were beating the crap out of them. Too. Well, I think that this is what we had said needed to happen. Mm. He's a transitional guy. Yeah. Where he links the cruiserweights so and the, the main, main roster. roster. Yeah. So it's fine because he's not he's being booked strange, but he's being booked strong because he's smart. Yeah. Well, relatively speaking, <laughs> because he he's winning matches because he's using his head. Yeah. So picking his spots. Yeah. Um. I was. I think it was a couple weeks ago. I forgot to mention this. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a segment where Enzo and uh, Neville like meet each other in the back. Mm-hmm. And they're like looking at each other. I'm like, how much you want to bet Neville loves the fact that he gets to work with Enzo oh, because they're both NXT guys. Yeah. So like, I kind of figured like it's probably like the best that like I'm sure he loves having him around. Yeah. So I just thought it was kind of funny because obviously Neville's meant to be angry all the time. Right, and it's you know bringing some more views to 205 mm-hmm. which is his domain that's true yeah which uh actually after Strowman's making his way back up the ramp uh neville's music hits and he comes out and yeah Neville's kind of like huh? it's like i don't want any just beef with by, you just walking by so he comes into the ring and then uh what is he hit he hit the red arrow right on yeah enzo mm-hmm. and then he grabbed the mic and said how are you doing yeah it's really strange when someone comes in after, after someone who had gotten beaten up and then uses a an aerial move. Mm-hmm. But obviously it makes sense because, well, his options are that or do the Rings of Saturn. Yeah, which is... Which is a submission move on someone who's already asleep. Yeah. So it doesn't make a whole lot of yeah. sense. So then, uh, what happened? Right? Then we went to commercial, right? And then came back? Uh, yeah. And then Charlie was interviewing Enzo in the locker room. Yes. And... Uh, she basically asks how he's doing, you know, even though he just got the crap kicked out. Oh yeah, he did not look good. <laughs> and he said, "Don't worry, just ask ask Neville, Neville. how he is oh, yeah, after, after Sunday." The match, right? Yes. And then we got Neville versus Grand Metal League, and this match could have been so good. You mean potential, or something happened that it? No, it, could, it had the potential yeah. to be a great. Okay, match. I was gonna say like there wasn't a whole lot going no, on no, here. No, um, you're not gonna at, get a good cruiserweight match on Raw at one point. Neville tried to take um, Grand Metal League's mask off, but he ends up ripping it. Yeah. So the entire ma- match, it's almost as if he didn't have a mask on to mm-hmm. begin with, which is kind of funny. Yeah, it was like ripped all across the, over yeah. his eye and stuff. You see half his face. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. that wasn't supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, eventually Neville just wins with the rings of mm-hmm. Saturn. Um, not surprising, obviously. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, it was a short cruiserweight match yeah. on a row. It's to be expected. To be honest, they should just have Enzo do the cruiserweight segment on Raw and just keep the cruiserweights off Raw. There's no point. Um, unless they're furthering a storyline. Yeah. Well, if they're like, not, if they're not going to try, you have a good point. Yeah. And if they get rid of the, if they get rid of the, um, like a chunk of cruiserweight segment, they mm-hmm. give it to the women. Right. Yeah. That, that would make would more fun. sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but you know, which I would assume that if the cruiserweights do go by the wayside and they get rid of 205 live then that's probably what'll just happen it'll be another women's segment that takes over i don't see that happening i don't think they'll get rid of the cruiserweights in general do. i well Unless they just send them back down to nxt and have some sort of well honestly i wouldn't be surprised if they just do the network show yeah and not have them on raw at all yeah, i guess that's true because you can have them on nxt and 205 live yeah so that would, that would make more sense. Yeah. Which is kind of what they started doing at the beginning, and then they... Right, yeah, yeah, Because yeah. some of them were... Because before, before they were on a couple Raw. of them were even in the, uh, the Dusty Rhodes Classic last year. Yeah. Rich uh, Swan was, too. Yeah, Jack Gallagher mm-hmm. had a couple of matches on NXT yep. before 205 yeah. Live started. He fought Tyler Bate not too, too long ago. Yeah, but that was that was different, because yeah. he was facing him for the uh, European British, title. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're up to the main event. Yeah. The six pack challenge. What is a SmackDown? Yeah, I know. Uh, for the Intercontinental title, inter- um, number one contendership. Mm-hmm. So before the match starts, Elias comes out mm-hmm. and he starts singing a song, um, mocking his opponents yep. individually. Or he started to. Yeah. Um, he started with uh, Jason Jordan, if mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken. I- um, 
And then he starts talking about the Hardys, and then... No, no, he doesn't talk about the Hardys. He talks about... Or maybe he starts just, to talk about the Hardys, and um, then... Well, no, he did Jason Jordan, mm. and then he started doing, I guess, the Hardys, and, and then, then that's when music, the Hardys came out. Yeah. Um, So, uh... But yeah, this is the norm for yeah. a multi-man match. A lot of broken pinfall mm-hmm. attempts. That There was that one cool spot where Elias jumped from the... Uh, the ground up to the top turnbuckle oh yeah he got, he got some height yeah man. jason jordan was up top i mean he grabbed onto him but it was it was a nice jump yeah uh, they um they did the tower of doom didn't they that's the superplex yeah, power bomb I guess thing that's, yeah i guess that's what they call it. i think that's what it's called yeah. um so they did that, that, was that a cool spot. that's always fun yeah yeah because um, that's because that's right because jordan caught him and then tossed elias over the ring outside yeah and then they did that mm-hmm. um so uh yeah this but, was a predictable match oh yeah well obviously yeah because um at one point it looked like there was a chance for axel to win i think he well, had someone down and then i think jason jordan um broke up the pinfall mm-hmm. and then he took the uh or he used his neck breaker i think it just called it a neck breaker Ooh. Uh, jason jordan, jason jordan? Uh-huh. yeah he used it on axel and then that's how he got the pin oh is that all? because it's it's his, ver- his his part in the grand oh Apple yeah that's too. right 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 um and then yeah, he, he gets he hit the everybody pin. with northern light suplex so yeah point. that was earlier yeah which uh i mean i he's a great athlete and everything but sometimes i cringe on those landings oh well you know ever since cena was dumped on his head well that was a, I, a I little know, different I it was different but. yeah so uh but after the match, because Jason Jordan had won by pinning Axel, mm-hmm. uh, the Miz comes in and uh, he starts clapping, like the golf clap, yep. and um, and then clap. and then uh, he what turns around and goes mm-hmm. to hit Jason Jordan, and then um, the Miz Taraj comes in and attacks yep. him, and then uh, he gets a skull crushing finale, mm-hmm. and then uh, he grabs the microphone, and he says that. At no mercy, I will still have my title. Kurt Angle will still be a terrible father, and you'll still be a bastard. Yeah, it was it was a decent way to end it. Yeah. Um. So, think there's any way they put the title on Jason Jordan? No. All right. So here's what I'm thinking. It it still wouldn't work because it wouldn't benefit Jason Jordan anyway. But you have Joe come back and attack him, and have a storyline between Joe and Jason Jordan. I think that would be good. That would probably be the best thing for him. Yeah. Because you have Joe who you can rely on to Mm -hmm. have a story that doesn't And then be like, you took my spot. This was supposed to be my spot facing the Miz for the IC. Except for the fact that it was never announced or anything. Yeah, I know. It was supposed to happen, though. (laughs) So. Um, But but, that would would be good. Yeah. And give the Miz Jeff. Yeah, right. You can have that. Yeah. That would be the best Mm -hmm. way. Or give him Matt and Jeff. And Matt and Jeff kind of have a a small feud in involved in their feud, mm-hmm. so that yeah. that'd be cool. Yeah, something. Yeah, I don't know. But it's, uh, it's gonna be interesting to see where they go with some storylines after No Mercy. That's true. Oh. But um, we're actually getting to the point in time where a lot of things have to get wrapped up because it's time to start building for. Well, Survivor Mercy. Series is yeah. gonna put everything on pause. Right. Oh, yeah, that's true, because they'll just probably have the big match. Mm -hmm. So either they're going to wrap a lot of things up, not do anything for a month, Mm -hmm. and then get started in December. Or hit the pause button. (laughs) Or hit the pause button, (laughs) which is obviously the worst thing to do. So that will probably be their uh, their plan. So, So, yeah, this was our Raw review. Yeah, Um, I had kind of started saying this earlier, but had this been the Labor Day show, it would have been fine. Oh, yeah, that's true, because, yeah. So they, Labor Day was really good, mm-hmm. and this one was meh. Yeah. They could have very easily just swapped the two shows. That's true. There's nothing here yeah. that happened that couldn't have happened yeah. two weeks ago. Yeah. and the attendance has been terrible lately. Yeah. It's because everyone watches on Hulu. Yeah, I guess so. All right. But- so uh, if you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.